Hi everyone, thank you for sticking with us um, through our technological issues <laughs> throughout the week. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start over. So for those of you who could have hear okay, um, thank you for, for letting me repeat this information. Um, but for those of you guys who are struggling to hear me, um, I, I, I'm going to make it so that you guys didn't miss anything, okay? So my name is Elisa. Thank you uh, for joining us again on today's episode of Elma Park Zoo's Zoo School Live. And with me today is one of my favorite ambassador animals that I get to work with here at Elwood Park Zoo. And her name is Brie, like the stinky cheese. And she is a striped skunk. So I think that I'm, I'm hearing that this sounds better. So hopefully we're a-okay from now on. So if the video is a little bit shaky, I do apologize. We're not using the arm to try and up the quality of the volume. So Brie here is going to be six years old on May 8th. So that's actually pretty old for a skunk. They only live to be about eight or nine in human care. So in a zoo, for example. In the wild, they don't live nearly as long. So they only live to be about maybe two or three. And then one of the main reasons why they don't live that long is because they unfortunately get hit by cars. So that leads me into why they get hit by cars, and that's because their eyesight is awful. They have horrible eyesight. So if you look at her eyes, you can see that they're not big at all. They're really tiny. So instead, you can see her nose is moving a mile a minute. That's because her sense of smell is much, much better than her eyesight. So what she's in right now is something called a dig box. So it's just a part of a crate or a hide that is full of shredded paper. We can make dig boxes with anything really. So mulch or sand or wood chips, newspaper, shavings, you name it. Um, and we just add that type of substrate to make it a little bit more challenging for our animals to search through to find food. So it's kind of mimicking how a wild skunk would be searching for their food in the wild. So right now uh, she's eating a lot of different kinds of things. So we're getting, giving her her AM diet, her diet in the morning. So kind of like brunch, right? Right now that's a brunchy time. Um, in her diet we have things like cooked yam, regular yam, broccoli, lettuce, <laughs> blackberries, she's very interested. <laughs> uh, mealworms, and it looks like the mealworms are what she's going for first. So I definitely think those bugs are her favorite, which totally makes sense because skunks in the wild um, really, really like bugs. So she has these long claws that she uses to dig for bugs, and um, that's what skunks will do in the wild. They'll be digging in dirt for all of those different kinds of bugs, right? So, um, <laughs> it looks like I touched her tail and that made her a little nervous. Sorry, Brie. Um, our lesson today, uh, we're kind of going to be merging two themes here. We're going to be talking about her defense mechanism along with her um, senses. So, again, we already kind of talked about those senses. That's what we're going to be focusing on um, this upcoming week. <laughs> um, and we're gonna move a little bit farther away from uh, defense mechanisms, so what these guys use to help protect themselves in the wild. So, you guys, take a guess what skunk's main method to protect themselves is, and that's right, it's the ability to spray. So skunks can spray um, in a very, very interesting way. So they, there's lots of cool information about that spray. Um, they, they can only spray about three times in a row. Then they have to wait about four weeks for the chemical to build back up in their bodies in order to spray again. Why is Brie not spraying? That's because she can't. Um, it would be um, quite awful if we had an education ambassador animal that could spray us educators along with our audiences, right? So her scent gland, which is a part of her body, um, inside, so think of like an organ like your heart or your lungs, that's responsible for creating the chemical that um, is released when they spray. So that scent gland was removed by a veterinarian when she was very, very young, only a couple days old, so now she's no longer able to spray. But she still acts like a real skunk. So skunks will, display different warning signs um, before they even spray. The reason for this is because skunks 
only want to spray if they absolutely have to, only if it's necessary. That's because they can only spray about three times in a row. Again, they have to wait about four weeks for that spray, uh, that chemical to build back up in their bodies in order to spray again. So they'll stomp their feet, they'll hiss like a cat, growl like a dog, and show their teeth. They'll st uh, stick their tail up, and some of them can even do a handstand. They do all of these warning displays to tell you to back off, uh, and if you still didn't get away, you kind of had it coming because they tried really, really hard to tell you that they were going to spray you, right? Um, so these guys can uh, spray from about 12 feet away. Even though their eyesight's really bad, they almost always hit their targets. Um, and you can smell that spray from up to about three miles away. So it's really, really strong. And that spray can, can temporarily blind you for up to 30 minutes. So it's basically like pepper spray. It's not something that you want to mess with, right? It not only does it smell, but it can really, really hurt. So you definitely want to stay away from those skunks in the wild because they're going to be acting more aggressive than our um, ambassador skunk here. She's quite accustomed to human interaction. Um, so she's used to us. She's a lot more docile. That means she's much more mild tempered than a skunk in the wild that you would find, right? So she's a nocturnal species. That means she's active at nighttime and sleeps during the day. Why is she awake right now then? That is because we woke her up from her nap so that she could meet you guys, right? So we delayed her breakfast just a tiny bit just so she could have maybe a brunch instead so that she could meet you guys, right? It's okay, she will sleep the rest of the day. Um, these guys kind of adjust a little bit to our schedules um, so that we can use them for programs and I promise you that it does not affect their um, health in any way that they are, they are a-okay. These guys are also a solitary species, so like a lot of the animals that you guys have met so far, um, she likes to stay by herself, and that doesn't mean that she's lonely. She definitely prefers her alone time, right? Um, I think now we're going to go to some questions, all right? Uh, so um, it looks like uh, some of you guys might have missed uh, her name. Her name is Bree. Bree, like the stinky cheese, she will be turning six years old on May 8th. All right, Amy. Amy asked, can skunks swim? Yes, yes, skunks can swim. Um, do they like it? That's a whole other question entirely, but yes, they can swim. Looks like Amanda's asking, do they have different patterns besides stripes? Amanda, what an amazing question. So yes, there are, um, if I'm correct, I believe 12 species of skunks. So striped skunks are not the only ones that we have in the world. Um, there's lots of different kinds. And for example, there's ones that can be found um, a little bit farther west called spotted skunks. They're much smaller and they like to climb trees and they have spots instead of stripes. And the stripes and the spots on each individual skunk are very unique. Um, they are unique to them, so you can actually tell them apart by looking at their patterns. Evan, is she soft? You know what, Evan? She is. This is a really, really cool question because um, a lot of people think that they're very wiry to the touch, that their, their um, hair is coarse or hard, and they actually feel very similar to a cat or a dog. Mackenzie, does she have family here at the zoo? Good question, Mackenzie. Um, she does not have any family members here at the zoo. Um, she is the only skunk in the animal collection um, and the collection as a whole in the zoo. So we don't have any skunks on exhibit. The only skunk we have right now is Bree. We did have a skunk, Pepito, um, and unfortunately he passed away not all that long ago. So maybe we'll look to get some more skunks in the future. Natalie, does she stink? Oh, yes, Natalie, she stinks so bad. Just because she can't spray anymore doesn't mean she doesn't smell. So skunks are closely related to weasels, minks, ferrets. All of those animals have that musty, musty smell. It doesn't matter if you give them a bath, the instant they dry, they stink again. So yes, she's very stinky. So um, if I held her, like when I'm going to go put her back into her enclosure, my entire sweatshirt is going to smell. <laughs> it's going to smell like a skunk. Kara, can
and you hold her. Yes, so we, we are able to hold her. Um, however, she is not the biggest fan of being held, so we definitely want, uh, we're trying to lead more towards showing off how they can move around naturally, um, and she's more comfortable walking on her own, so that's why I'm not holding her right now. Julie, is she good around other animals? You know what, Julie? Uh, no, not really. Um, she's a scared cat. She's a scared of everything. So I think any animal coming near her, she would freak out and start running away. Sometimes if I get my hand a little bit too close to her, make sudden movements with my hands like I'm doing right now, she might get a little scared. So nope, she likes to be by herself. Savvy, is she nocturnal? What does she do all day? Yes, she is nocturnal. is her favorite activity. Ella and Annie want to know, has anyone ever been sprayed by her? No, they have not. Luckily, that scent gland was removed when she was very, very young. Um, so luckily, she uh, didn't have any ability or any chance to spray anybody, right? Evan, can she still spray if her legs are in the air? Evan, what an amazing question. Yes, so these guys aren't as likely to display that handstand that I talked about. Spotted skunks are much more likely. They're even able to walk on their front legs. Um, and they, yes, can spray with their back legs up in the air. Eli, why do they smell so bad? So Eli, they smell pretty bad because they um, have this muck that's kind of just this oil that's secreted through their skin and that's just the type of animal that they are. So that oily, oily skin makes her really, really smelly. Natalie, how did she end up at Elmwood Park Zoo? Great question, Natalie. So she actually came to us from a breeder. So what that means is she came to us from someone who raises skunks. So um, she was removed from the wild by seven generations. What that means is that we um, did <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's very interested in our camera. Um, we made sure that we didn't just take her out of the wild, right? That That's not very good for quite a lot of reasons. Um, so she has many generations before her who were bred before we decided on her specifically to come to the zoo. Ada and Augie want to know why she is striped. Great question. She is striped as a warning. That's to tell other animals to back off, to stay away. Um, a lot of animals will learn that that black and white striped pattern means that she is dangerous, right? She has the ability to spray. I'm just gonna scatter some more food for her so you guys can watch her sniff around, right? Cause that's what we're gonna be focusing on soon our senses, right? Again, I'm just gonna repeat that her eyesight is awful and she therefore depends on that sense of smell instead. Ina, does she see better in the dark? That's a really good question, Ina. Um, honestly, she just doesn't see me well at all. <laughs> it doesn't really matter if it's daytime or nighttime. Her eyesight's pretty much awful all the time. Josh wants to know, where do they live in the wild? Really, really good question, Josh. So these guys are found in woodlands, forests, plains, also urban and suburban areas, right? So I bet some of you guys watching have seen striped skunks maybe in your backyards or crossing the street while your mom or dad are, are driving, right? Um, and they can be found from Southern Canada throughout North America, and then all the way down to uh, northern parts of Mexico. Tyler wants to know if skunks hibernate. Oh, great question. So skunks do kind of um, hibernate. So in the wintertime, these guys are gonna be much less active. Um, sometimes these guys, not like bears, where they definitely don't come out of hibernation, these guys really need to, especially with the increase in, in overall uh, temperatures, um, if they need to come out and gather food, eat some food, um, that they're able to do so. But yes, they're much less active in the colder months. Asaya wants to know how much she weighs. She weighs about five pounds, so not very much. 
Jessica wants to know, does she have sharp claws? Great question, Jessica. They're actually not sharp. As, as long and big as they are, um, they're really dull, but they're strong and sturdy. So she uses those claws to dig. Skunks have long claws in order to dig for bugs. Spotted skunks, in comparison, um, since they like to climb in trees, they actually have much sharper claws. That helps them to grip onto tree bark. And I think we're gonna have uh, one more question. Who are their predators? Oh my gosh, Helen, what an amazing question because that's going to lead to more senses. Great horned owls, which are also native to our area, are the main predator for a striped skunk. Why in the world would something want to eat something else that can spray them? Well, that we might get into at a later time when we learn a little bit more about owls, but I will say this, their sense of smell is not very good. All right, guys, I think that's all the time we have for uh, today. So thank you guys so much for watching and um, make sure to tune in again tomorrow where you might meet one of our feathery friends. If you're catching this video on YouTube, um, please be sure to, to, to subscribe on our channel or if you're watching on our website um, so that way you can get all of the notifications of our latest videos. If you're also interested in helping out the zoo, um, you can always make a donation to our emergency fund, which can be found on our website at elmwoodparkzoo.org. Um, the other thing that we would like to ask you guys is after you finish watching this episode, if you want to try a, a smell test at home. So what you can do is you can grab a t-shirt or a bandana to use as a blindfold. And with your parents' permission, you can try and guess each mystery scent that you're using at home, such as different herbs, spices, or perfumes. And you guys can do your own smell test at home, just kind of like Brie did here today, all right? Thank you guys so much for tuning in on today's episode. We hope you guys enjoyed watching Brie, and we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much.